there, Postal here. So, uh, today what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start a series where I review uh, an entire line uh, relatively quickly, um, 10, maybe 15 minutes. I suppose we'll see at the end of the cut. Um, today I'm going to start off with what is, in my opinion, the best tier um, 10 light fighter. And then we'll go down that particular line and I guess some reasons as to why I think it is the, the best tier 10 light fighter. And it's the American, the F-86A um, Sabre. This particular plane is is really everything before it wrapped into one plus 10. Um, this particular plane is awesome. I was going down the American light fighter line just to try it out and what I liked about the line uh, although I don't believe it's the best line uh, for light fighters um, what I liked about it is every plane got a little bit better than the plane before it there wasn't a significant jump from um, in play style down the line um, you know you've got we'll go over that in just a second and so I really did enjoy that aspect of it start off with the P12 no big deal a tier 1 plane uh, P23, which I actually did keep, really enjoyed this plane. Um, it gets you, it really sets you up for what the rest of this line is going to be. Um, it's not the best maneuverability, certainly not the best guns, but it's on the top echelon of of, um, of all the planes that are out there. Great maneuverability, if not the best. Um, the guns just kind of whittle away the enemy and you know it allows you to do what you need to do the uh, the rest of the line is just like this and so when you go down the tech tree the the only plane that i really thought was a dud was the hawk to be honest um you know it, it has more guns than um any other plane on the line as far as like where they're set up but the maneuverability was so piss poor on it that um, i was glad to get by that particular plane but once you start at the P-36 and beyond, um, the P-36 sets the precedent for the rest of this particular line. You've got your kind of your very mediocre uh, machine guns, uh, mediocre maneuverability, but high altitude for its tier, high power for its tier. And so one thing that you need to know when you're going down this particular line is every single engine you do want to get the fully upgraded engine at least if you're going to be flying that plane for for a significant amount of time. Um, I got the engine on each one because if any of them rolled over to the next plane, um, then you'd be able to have that engine ready to go. The P-40, um, Tier 5, a lot of people kind of deride this particular plane. I really actually quite enjoyed it. The key to playing this line is honestly play the light fighters like you would a heavy fighter, or an energy fighter, I guess is how I should say that. What I mean is you're not going to get into a dogfight, at least not until tier 8. Um, you need to utilize your, your speed and your um, altitude, go up high, and do a raptor move and dive down on whoever you're, you're going to be getting. This plane is really good at fighting with heavy fighters up high because you have more maneuverability than them. Um, and it's good at dive bombing planes that are down below it. You'll notice this particular plane, the P-40, has 6 of the 12.7 millimeter machine guns. That's what you're going to have for the rest of this particular line. So get used to it at Tier 5. If you can make it work at Tier 5, you're going to absolutely love it at Tier 10. After Tier 5, we get into the Mustangs, quintessential um, American fighter planes. P-51A, although not the best Tier 6 fighter, is still very solid. Um, you've got four of the 12.7 uh, machine guns, a little bit longer range, less of them, but, but that longer range, uh, even though it's like 300 feet, uh, is significant. You should already be used to going up high and dive bombing everybody. And this is this is perfect for that. It's built for that in real life. The Mustangs were meant for high intercepting those BF-109s, intercepting bombers, and this does it perfectly well in the game. Um, get the top engine. You're going to want it. It's. I think on this one you can get away with the the Dash One, but 
the V1653, I mean, look at the difference. It's it's double the horsepower. If you're going to be on this plane for a little while, which tier six, you're you know you're on for a little bit, you want to get the best um, the best engine for it. Next, the P51D. Um, to me, this was probably the most this uh, I want to say the second most mediocre of the line, and and I think the reason isn't necessarily the plane. I think the reason was because you're going up against so many tier 8s and there are a significant amount of really good planes at tier 8. I don't know if I'm going to go back and buy this particular plane. Um, but it's it's like the P51A but a little bit better. And that's another thing I really like about this whole line. I know I've mentioned it before but it's you're not there's not a significant change in the the tactics all the way through the line. Tier 9 and tier 10 get better. Um, but you, the tactics you learn using the Mustangs, um, you know, you'll continue to use at tier nine and tier ten. So, tier eight, we've got the honestly the quintessential um, American fighter P51H Mustang. Um, this does everything, really anything you want it to do besides dog fighting yaks. <laughs> um, one thing that really surprises uh, people about this particular plane is its horsepower. Get the top engine on this plane and you can just literally go straight up with a boost and you can keep up with everything that you run into. Um, everything maybe besides a 262, but if you catch a 262 um, in a turn or something like that, you're going to tear it up. Uh, I'm not afraid of pancakes in this plane. I'm not afraid of anything. Uh, I can go from mid-range to, to high range without stalling out. Um, every single time the engine power is is that great you have your six um, well wrong one you've got your six um, 13 millimeter machine guns you've got the the range boost on them your it says effective range 1800 but really it's about 2100 and um, let's go ahead and, and watch some gameplay of that so hopefully at this point in the background you've noticed that the P-51H is able to go up really high, stick with those planes that aren't used to having other things up high. Took down that RB-17, um, is able to stay up with some of those high fighters and heavy fighters. Um, that's where this plane lives, and you know, use that high horsepower, use that high altitude performance to really stay up there and kind of own the, the skies. Um, you don't see a lot of the P-51H, and so has typically you can surprise damaged. people with that aspect. Uh, let's see what's going on here. So that, this is the tier where the maneuverability just gets up to the point where you can do these kind of maneuvers and make a U-turn and catch somebody by six. Use the boost, move up on somebody, and tear them up. And see, you know, this guy's high up, but the horsepower, the you know, altitude performance allows this plane to just kind of go straight up if you want to, uh, for short distance like that. Well, medium distances, I should say. And we're just kind of spinning around in circles and doing all this. There's that. Let's see. <laughs> My son in the background there. Alright, so I'm gonna go boosting up here, spin around just a little bit, and we'll be able to continue to own this process. What you'll notice me do very often, especially in this line, put out a short burst, and that way I'll know that my accuracy is where it should be. Keep um, it up. Since Victory the guns don't overheat, you know, putting out a short burst like that isn't going to really affect the performance, but it'll make sure that when I do start holding down the trigger, that it just kind of melts right through. There you go. Using the boost to get back up here. See if we can get up. Nope. Alright, so that's the match. Not too bad. 
head back home. So at tier 9 we have the FJ1, which as good as, uh, as the P51H was, the FJ1 is even better. So you can take a quick look here at the stats, and you know, not bad for the P51H. The FJ1 is significantly better in every regard. Um, gun armament, it's the same guns that you've had, a little bit longer range. Um, but that range comes in super handy, obviously. You know, your damage per second's not going to be uh, a jump up, but that range is what the help is. If you've gotten used to the the Mustangs, the Fury is going to fit right in with your playstyle. Go up high, dive down, tear it up. Let's see some gameplay. So as we do, we're boosting up high here. Take a look around. See what we can do to get ourselves in position to win. I don't see anything, but something's going to be coming up. I can feel it. And, yep, there we go. So, take a look. Is that the only thing? Nope. Oh, okay. So we've got a bomber here. We want to make sure that we're getting this bomber taken care of and circling around. So, Obviously, I've got some help here, but you know we're just carrying through the bomb, and even on your own, you're going to be able to go through and take down RB-17s for sure very easily. And when you're going against a human, you need to be a little bit more um, wary because they'll use their defensive turrets obviously a little bit better. But there we go. Take down, um, really take down whatever we can up here. I tend to go for the most maneuver, and then if there's two planes that are kind of the same maneuverability, I'll go for the human, just because I assume they're going to have better skills. And goodbye, thank you. Death by a thousand paper cuts. Let's go over here and see what we can do against this 262. Nothing else coming behind me. military base is launching strikes on the enemy. This will make things easier for you. So, see, I'm, I'm able to stick here with him. Um, you know, when he's at the far range of my guns, um, you know, that's where you're only going to hit one or two bullets, and that's where this, the guns really have... Uh, no impact when they're only really doing like one hit point of damage but he's not getting away if he just went straight he'd be able to get away um, when you get the saber they're not going to be able to get away because the saber is, is much faster actually than the, the fury but he turned let me stick with him and now i'm able to turn around here and go right on to the next plane and you know these are heavy fighters these are ground pounders and significant amount of hit points you got to chew through and Fury can do that, the Mustangs can do that, the Saber can do that. It just has to go with your patience. And so what you'll see here is, you know, boosting up, getting close to him, and it's just going to try to play this Pancake. Uh, Pancake is such a uh, large plane as far as hitting surface is concerned. But yeah, it's death by a thousand paper cuts, and those paper cuts kill them. Next plane. Let's see if we can get back up here and hurt the RB. Uh, probably have to deal with this multi roll first. And if these Japanese multi rolls, if they're heading up like that, you can usually, because they kind of kind of coast near the top, you can get them pretty easily. The RB is gone. Let's go ahead and get this heavy fighter. So just because of the nature of this particular plane, you're going to be dealing with a lot of heavy fighters and bombers. Because this plane is so good up high, you want to be able to get used to that. Another 262. Will I be able to tear through him? Let's find out. No, he's going to go away. So I'm going to fire at him just to, just to fire at him. And you see, he's just kind of whittling away. He's going to hurt and tear him up. Yeah, he's hitting his boost now, but it is too late. I've just cut through how much of his hit points. All because he turned. And that's where the, you know, the significant maneuverability boost that this plane gets at tier 9 and tier 10 really comes in handy. 
Um, I honestly think that the weapons being so weak are actually, you know, to its strength. A lot of people will be like, oh, you know, a couple ping 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 ping, whoop de doo you wait five seconds and half your hit points are gone. Well, more than half your hit points, five seconds is quite a long time. It's not a big punch in the Way face like a lot of the guns that are out there, but it is going to absolutely tear planes up. Let's see if we can get this uh, RB before the end of the match. He's boosting away, but you see that I'm keeping a decent pace with him. Going 470 miles an hour, even slowing down here, and this is going to be one of the situations where you to make sure you've got enough hit points to survive it, but I'm going right through them, right? Now versus humans, obviously you need to be quite a bit more careful, but that's Victory true of any plane that you're Keep going against. Uh, a lot of those bombers, uh, the humans that use them, can tear through you, and so you're going to have to use different tactics, but you can stick with them, maybe. you can stick with any bomber that's out there and really tear it up. See, there's this maneuverability. People aren't expecting you to come up behind them like that. And um, you can really play this plane and the saber at the next level like a dogfighter. A little shimmy and a shake and send her behind somebody that wasn't expecting it. This is in the game though. Let's hop back into the hangar. And that leads to the F-86A saber. Uh, again, the best tier 10 light fighter in the game. Uh, and, and why is that? Well, I think part of it is because the playstyle that you have leading up to it rolls over right into this one. There's no completely out of whack, out of left field jump from one playstyle to another playstyle. This playstyle is the exact same playstyle you've had from Tier 5, Tier 4 on. The difference is this particular plane is just straight up better and better and better than everything that you've ran into. The gar gun armament, not, obviously. Same guns that you've had. But if you're used to that from tier 4 on, you're going to be perfectly acceptable with that. You're going to you're going to be able to utilize them just as you have to really it's going to be death by a thousand paper cuts and that's good. That's not a bad thing. You just need to be used to how that playstyle is with the guns. Beyond that though, if you've learned to fly high and dive down, do things of that nature, stay up high and really own the top part of the sky, this plane is built for that. The airspeed, look at how quick the airspeed jumped from tier 8 to tier 10. And the airspeed was really good on the, the P-51H. It's outstanding on the Sabre. In fact, sometimes you'll get behind planes, and I'm sure we'll see it on the video, and you've got to slow down because you're going so fast and you're, or otherwise you're going to be bypassing them. The maneuverability comes out of left field. Um, you know, it's significantly higher than the Mustang. It's one of the best at tier 10. It's no yak, but it's exactly what you want this plane to be. You can take out anything you want as far as a dogfight is concerned. You just have to be mindful of some of the really um, high maneuverability planes like the Yak-30. I think the LA may be uh, an issue. But, you know, if you're, if you're 5,000 feet above them and you dive bomb them, they're not going to be able to do anything to you. And even if you don't kill them on the dive, you're going to be flying past them at such an airspeed, they're never going to catch up. You really utilize it as an energy fighter in those situations. With the altitude performance, though, you can take on anything that's up top. Those 262s, tier 9, tier 10, whatever it may be. The, the F2Hs, the XF90s. Any um, multi-role plane that's up there. Bombers. The RB-17 is a joke. This thing tears through those. Um, you know, there's no tier 10 bombers at this point, but those, we'll see if those cause an issue. But everything else, the Sabre owns the sky in that regard. The, the biggest downfall, if there is a downfall of the Sabre, is in reality, as good as this plane is, and again, it's the best tier 10 uh, light fighter, it can't overcome a strong ground attack um, from the enemy team. If you've got a, if it's just you versus a tier 10 ground attack plane, and that ground attack plane is a good player, they're going to be able to continue to flip, um, to flip sectors. Uh, this plane is great at defense. It is great at um, you know holding a sector, 
but it's not necessarily the best at taking over a sector and at tier 10 there's so many really strong planes that can take over sectors this plane is an excellent support fighter it is not gonna going to um, take over those sectors for you but it will win you lots and lots of games you'll get you'll have the ability to get aces pretty um, I don't say often because aces don't come often but you get aces in this plane you can you can literally just own the sky as far as combat is concerned versus other air, um, aircraft and um, let's take a quick look at some some gameplay all right so at this point you know exactly what needs to be done boosting to begin the, the battle. I'm going to the center here to get some military base, take a wrap. Nothing as of right now, but also be there's just gonna be something. So I'm waiting for that. There we got some heavies. We got any bombers? Anything else that's gonna be coming this way? Not right now. And one thing I, I really enjoy about this plane though is there's some I don't know, some planes, you know, you kind of have to wait till everybody passes because your maneuverability doesn't allow you to kind of get into the middle of it. This plane, if I want to get into the middle of it, that's fine because I can get out of it with my maneuverability. There goes that F7U. Sorry, sir. Let's go ahead and take out the heavy fighters. Get back on here. Just make sure I'm not getting smacked by the 262. And nothing. Th th this 262 is not going to outrun me. It's too late already for him. This one is close. The one thing that you're going to notice on this replay is, you know, very often I'm going significantly faster than everything I'm chasing, and if you turn behind a plane too quickly, you're going to you know, overturn, I mean, overpass them. So you need to be mindful of that. I think this is uh, one of the planes where I do that. The J7s are pretty slow. Um, dive to the left, no big deal. Um, the J7s are pretty slow, so if you come up behind them and you're not able to take care of them very quickly, you're going to pass them, so you need to start hitting the air brake sooner rather than later. I mean, even at my slow, it's about 30 miles an hour, and it's going uh, faster than a J7 typically goes at cruising speed. So, alright, so now we're down low, and that's fine in this plane. Again, the only plane that you're really going to have an issue with is, is like a Yak 30. Everything else, this can outmaneuver, this can, this can go with. But you see here, I just put the boost on, and I go from 2,000 feet up to 7,000 feet, and it's nothing really. And this F7U is probably regretting not paying attention. Unfortunately, you've got to keep your head on a swivel at this level, at tier 10. So, I'm turning around down here, get the other multi-roll, and this thing just chews up multi-roll things. It's really good against everything, but multi-rolls especially. They just don't have the maneuverability to even speed to even try to get away. The only thing this um, saber has any issues with, and, and what I mean by issues is, um, you know, taking out in one round, is going to be some of those really fast heavy planes that are smart enough to just get away. Um, and if I stupidly get into do a dogfight with the Yak 30 and I don't have enough boost or speed to get away if I need to, that's my own fault, though, right? I should be prepared for that. So we've got nothing really going on here. Let's see if we can. Uh, get ourselves boosted back up. We got an ME. So there's another a high altitude fighter. Um, the difference is the maneuverability on the Sabre is significantly better. The guns significantly worse as far as the concern. They're like half the score. But it's not like you can't kill things that are up here. You know, he's going to tear through this. And there's nothing he can do. He can't outspeed me. He can't out me. He's going to twist a little bit. I'm going to um, go too fast, unfortunately, so I was still boosting right up to the, the end there. Let's do a little wiggle out and wiggle back in, and now he's toast. I've learned my lesson. Don't over... There you go. Now we're going to spin back up, and I'm just so confident in this plane. Everything I run into, um, you know, as long as I'm playing how I should be playing, I'm going to be playing. Um, no matter what kind of plane it is, but especially against light fighters, I'm going to be playing light fighters in multiple. So let's get back up here. He's got missiles, so we're going to dive to the... There we go. Take a couple bullet hits, but don't have to worry about the missiles. And now he's toast. Mm, you know... Um, <laughs> I'd like to say that I'm making it look easy, but the plane has a lot to do with it. As we're playing this plane right. Um, and the patient, and that's the key. You're going to own the skies. There's going to be times you run into things and, yeah, it's going to take you half a year to, to whittle it down. 
but if um, if you've cleared the sky of all the things that can hurt you, you're going to be able to take out that you know that um, other plane. So let's get Nipsey, and we're back up to 8,000 feet, and you can see it's not even we're not even in the yellow. So you know you're still having full you know, full maneuverability, full airspeed, all that good stuff here. And let's go ahead and circle around, get rid of this ME. Done. And let's spin back around. Move in there. I'm, I expected the 262 to boost away from me, so I was boosting into him. And um, he didn't. I guess he didn't have any boost left. So. Way to go! Yeah, again, this thing goes so fast, sometimes you don't even realize it. And he's toast. Here. Eating, eating multi rolls for dinner here. Oop, oh, over committing. Slow down, air brakes. It's funny, you use air brakes as much as you use boost in this particular plane. Just to be able to get where you need to be. And, you know, so this battle is almost over, basically. How many minutes are we in? five, six minutes. So let's see if we can get ourselves another fag before the end of the game here. Probably moving in too quick. Yep. So let's make a quick U-turn. He's not going to be able to outmaneuver me. Get behind him, hit the booth, get going, and he's going to be toast. And yeah, it's kind of rinsing and repeat, there. so to speak. But it, uh, this is what the plane's built for, so continue to do that. Let's see if we can get available. this ground pounder before the battle ends. Go out a couple quick bursts to see my range, to see if I'm on target. Can I get him? Can I get him? Can I get him? Can I get him? Nope. Oh well. So that's the end of this battle. Uh, yeah, I had to hit the brakes a little bit sooner with that guy. Anyway, you can see that the Sabre does everything you want it to do. Up top, down low, it owns the skies. Let's head back to the hangar. So as you can see from that gameplay, that's why the F-86A Sabre is the best light fighter in World of Warplanes. It's everything you want it to be. It's a, literally the jack of all trades and is typically the best plane in the sky in its particular zone. The key is if there is a plane that is better in any particular metric, whether it's maneuverability, airspeed, altitude performance, which you're not going to run into, um, utilize your strengths that beat it. If it's a highly maneuverable plane, well then use your airspeed, use your altitude performance, get away from it and circle back around. If it's a high airspeed um, plane, you're going to be able to stick with it, typically long enough to be able to tear it down. You, most people that have a high airspeed plane think they've got a high airspeed plane and don't realize you can keep up. You can keep up most of the time. As soon as they start to turn, they're done. Use your high altitude performance to take down everything else in the sky, and you're going to absolutely love this particular light fighter. It does everything you want it to do as far as a light fighter is concerned. I highly recommend the American Light Fighter line. And um, yeah, other than that, I hope you all have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be posting some others about um, some of the other light fighter lines that have gone down. Um, although this is the best tier 10, it's not necessarily the best entire line, and um, I'll post some of that as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a like if you did. Otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day.